In this video, we described the formation of an ionic bond from an energetic perspective. To illustrate it, we're actually going to be looking at the formation of sodium chloride. Uh, and the formation of sodium chloride uh, has to start from the constituent elements in their elemental forms. Okay, so sodium chloride is formed by sodium and chlorine, right? So sodium uh, in its elemental form is a solid, and chlorine in its, in its elemental form is a gas, but it's in, a, in diatomic form, right? So we'll have that that's uh, the normal appearance of chlorine. But of course, to uh, satisfy the stoichiometry, then we have to uh, take that molecule and divide by a factor of two. Okay, so that will be uh, the reaction of formation of sodium chloride, the ionic solid, from uh, the elemental form of the constituent elements. All right, great. Uh, again, we're, what we're going to do, what we're going to do now is try to see how, from an energetic perspective, that bond is formed. Okay, so uh, there's various steps that are uh, involved in this formation, and we're going to talk uh, about each one of them individually. And then uh, what we will do is uh, write an energy diagram here to uh, the right part, so that we can see how energy changes uh, for each one of the steps. Right, the first thing we have to do is uh, uh, put this uh, sodium uh, that is a solid uh, into the gas phase. So then the first step would be what we call the sublimation of uh, sodium. Right, so the reaction for that would be as follows. Sodium solid plus one half of Cl2 gas leads to sodium, which is a gas, and plus uh, one half of chlorine, which is a gas. Right. Notice that there is a sublimation and there is a process that requires energy. Okay, so we first start our energy diagram here with sodium uh, being a solid and chlorine being a gas. We have to supply some energy in order to be able to form uh, the second step in our diagram, which will be so uh, sodium uh, in the gas phase and then chlorine in the gas phase. And again, this is just positive because sublimating a solid requires energy. Okay, the second thing that we need to do is to uh, break the bond that you have in that chlorine gas. Okay, so the reaction then would be as follows. We take these reagents, okay, uh, sodium gas plus one half of chlorine gas, and then we break that bond to generate an atom of uh, sodium in the gas phase and an atom of uh, sodium in uh, the gas phase as well. Okay, notice that this energy would be the dissociation energy of uh, a bond in chlorine two divided by two. Okay, that still is some energy, uh, uh, required energy, right? So uh, breaking that bond is going to be a process that needs energy. So therefore, we actually have to supply a little bit of energy here uh, in order to continue to make progress in our diagram sodium gas plus chlorine gas. And again, that would be equal to half the bond energy of a chlorine to a molecule. All right, now we notice that uh, uh, the formation of uh, this ionic compound requires having a sodium plus and a chloride mion, minus ion, right? So the next step, now that we have both species in the gas phase, is to actually generate the ions, okay? So uh, the first thing that we can do is ionize that sodium uh, gas okay, into sodium plus, okay, in the gas phase, plus one electron plus the chloride gas. This is what we call the ionization energy, and it's something that we have studied uh, before. Okay, that is also a process that requires energy. All right, so uh, from here, we still need to add up some energy to be able to form the ion. Sodium uh, plus, plus one in the gas phase, plus one electron, plus chlorine gas. Okay, so until now, every single step that we actually have required in order to make progress to the, towards the ionic solid has required energy. But from now on, the rest of the uh, processes actually are going to be able to release a lot of energy, and we will see uh, how that works. Right, so the next step then is uh, uh, this chlorine atom uh, forming a negative ion. Okay, so we can actually see that when you uh, uh, add this electron to the chlorine ion, then to the chlorine atom, then you're going to form a chloride uh, um, minus ion. Okay, so sodium plus 
plus one electron plus this chloride, chlorine atom gas, is going to generate this sodium plus, which is a gas, plus chlor chloride minus, which is a gas. Okay, and this is what we actually called uh, the energy involved in this process. This is what we called the electron affinity of chlorine. And it turns out that uh, that process is now favorable because chlorine has a high tendency to form the negative ion. Okay, so uh, we're in this part of the diagram. That's all of the energy that we have had to supply until now. And then we start to get some energy back because, again, the formation of that chloride ion from the chlorine actually happens to be uh, happens to be stable and releases energy. Okay, so you have here your sodium plus in the gas phase and then your chloride uh, ion in the gas phase. Okay, the last step is simply to take these atoms in the gas phase and then have them interact uh, to form the solid. Okay, so that is going to be the last step where you have your sodium plus uh, gas plus the chloride ion, which is a gas, to generate sodium chloride, which is a solid. And this is the key interaction that is going to make the ionic bond possible, right? Notice that now what you actually have is that there's a very strong interaction between ions in the solid, and again, that is extremely favorable, such that the overall formation process is actually downhill, right? So uh, it's favorable to form the ionic solid from uh, the elemental uh, uh, sodium and chloride in the in their st stable elemental forms, right? So here you will have your final sodium uh, chloride in the solid, and I can notice that the total energy that is uh, uh, involved in the overall reaction in the overall ionic uh, uh, formation for sodium chloride will be negative, meaning that this actually releases energy, and it's something that we call a thermodynamically favorable uh, process. Now we got we actually have a tool to quantify exactly how. Uh, uh, this ionic bond formation uh, takes place. Actually, the, the uh, actual uh, name for uh, uh, this process is what we call the lattice energy. Okay, notice that you have now the ions going to, into a solid lattice so that they can interact strongly through Coulomb uh, forces. Okay, so the lattice energy is again uh, can be well captured by Coulomb's law, which is simply the interaction of ions. Okay, we're writing that Coulomb's law. We have that. This is simply the product of the charges involved. Okay, so it will be minus one for chlorine, plus one for uh, sodium, and then divided by some constants, four pi, and then the permittivity of, of a vacuum, and the separation between the ions and the lattice. Okay? Now, this lattice formation, again, is, is kind of the key process that makes the whole ionic bond formation possible. And uh, we can actually then now try to compare what the lattice energy should be for two different ionic solids, Okay, so that you can see uh, what the in, uh, uh, influence of uh, uh, Coulomb's law is in that lattice uh, uh, energy. All right, so let's uh, compare sodium chloride with magnesium oxide and try to predict okay, uh, uh, how the lattice energy should change again from sodium chloride, which we have right here, it's a solid, to magnesium oxide. We know that magnesium oxide is uh, formed by interaction of magnesium 2 plus ions with uh, oxide 2 minus ions in the solid phase. Okay, so when we apply uh, this equation to both sodium chloride and magnesium oxide, uh, if we assume that the distances don't change very much from one solid to the other, and that is a reasonable approximation, what we actually find is that a, a, a dominant contribution to the overall lattice energy will be the product of the charges. Notice that in this case, the product of the charges will be uh, 1 times 1, or minus 1 times 1, okay? But in the case of magnesium and oxygen, it will be minus uh, 2 from oxygen multiplied times 2. Okay, so this term in the numerator is 4 times greater for magnesium oxide than it is for sodium chloride. And that highlights the idea that when you have uh, highly charged ions, okay, that lattice energy is going to be much, much stronger than in sodium chloride. Okay, so again, uh, uh, due to Coulomb, uh, the charges involved in Coulomb's law alone, what we actually see is that the lattice energy of magnesium oxide should be about four times greater than that of uh, sodium chloride. In reality, uh, the experimental energy is about 4.24, and uh, that means that, well, the distances uh, between the magnesium and oxy oxide uh, ions in uh, the lattice are probably a little different uh, than those between sodium and chloride, and that makes perfect sense. Okay, so in this video we have described 
how we begin to think about uh, the formation of ionic bonds from an energetic perspective. We have seen that uh, in the idealized formation process, there are many steps that require energy, but all those tend to be compensated by uh, what we call the lattice energy, which is uh, the electrostatic interaction between the ions in the solid, uh, in the ionic solid, which can be well captured by Coulomb's law.